This is Patty Paulus. I have new work displayed at St. Paul Academy and Summit School, the Harry Drake Gallery. I'm going to show you and tell you a little bit about my work as we go through the gallery. This is at the upper school of St. Paul Academy and Summit School in St. Paul, Minnesota. I've been a teacher here for 16 years at the lower school, but this is the upper school. We have this beautiful gallery, has wonderful light. And I'm just gonna show you and talk to you a little bit about all the different um, media and the inspiration behind some of the work. Let's start with the first one. which is called Spirit Ascending 3. I did a series of three smaller paintings in response to a larger one, which you'll see later on. Uh, but I'm using Joss paper, which I will show you in just a little bit, but it is a, an Asian paper that is used um, in various ways in cultures. When people die, they burn the paper and as send it up to the spirits of the person that has died. Number two is called Fire Fields. And in all of these paintings, for the most part, I've used Joss paper and I've used acrylic paint. Uh, molding paste, uh, some of the sand that is used uh, to make popcorn ceilings, different uh, textures and different uh, grades of that. And I found that I like using that and pressing it into the molding paste and then painting afterwards. Here's the postcard for the show. And this year I decided to make um, business cards using uh, a painting that I cut up and uh, had a stamp made um, and put that on the back so that every business card has a different image on it. So that turned out to be kind of a fun thing for people to take with them. These are some really tiny little pieces that also have the Joss paper, and this is where I've used the molding paste and the sand. Uh, there is an Asian influence in a lot of my work. Landscape, grasses, hay bales, all of those different things. Not in particular a particular place, but a suggestion of a place. see some of the grounds of the school. This beautiful gallery has lots of wonderful windows, lots of wonderful light. In all of uh, these particular paintings, I've used the Joss paper. The top one is in response to this larger one, which you will see, called Phoenix. And in this one, it has a bird motif, which I usually have not um, incorporated birds or animals or figures or people in any of my paintings, but this one seemed to suggest that as I was painting. And I used this Joss paper, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, as sort of a collage aspect of it, and also burn the edges of these birds and also there's a suggestion of strings of music <coughs> music in the um, influence of my paintings <coughs> so I did this larger one first 
and these are all, I did seven of these in the show that are 40 inches by 60 inches. And the smaller one to the right is in response to the larger one. I'll just hold the phone up to this so that you can read a little bit about this show. It's called From Within. Paintings using Joss paper. And this paper was given to me by my mother in law maybe 20, 30 years ago. And I've found that I have used these in previous paintings. And I love the imperfections um, that you see on every one of the Joss papers because the paint is applied individually and there's some imperfections. Sometimes it's gold. Sometimes it's silver. And so I have a little booklet here where I show how it's burned. This one is in Malaysia. But I also had various papers here for people to look at and feel um, as they're looking at the paintings. This is called Joss Paper. This particular one was the one that's on the postcard. This is my first one that I did on this large paper. It's very freeing to work on large paper. To work, work in this very large format. And this first part of the Joss paper is right in here. So on this painting, I just put one piece of it in here. But then became and informed the rest of the paintings of the series that I did. Now this small one is in response to the bigger one. I think a lot of painters will do a small one, a small version, and then do a large one, but I did just the opposite. I started big and went small. I've had a tendency to have my artwork being kind of small and so this is a chance for me to really do something very large and freeing. And it was very freeing for me to work on this large format. I hadn't done this since college, actually. And I'm retiring from teaching now this year. This one is called Burnt Offerings. So it has a suggestion of landscape, but also there could be grasses, these could be flames. Um, in my previous work, I hadn't used so much um, of the dark paint, and so this was just kind of a new thing for me to kind of start using black a little bit more in my paintings. And the Joss paper you can see at the top was burned, and then I cut it apart, and uh, it almost became a flame or a grass. And sometimes the uh, adhering this Joss paper, of course, would take as long as it would take me to do the painting part aspect of it. Uh, there's some real spiritual imagery here that is not necessarily uh, something you need to know, but uh, for me it was very much a spiritual experience to be releasing and um, renewal and um, just a real process after my husband's death about a year and a half ago. This was a smaller painting that I did uh, at the same time that I did this larger one. As I was working on this larger one in my studio, I had about three smaller ones of varying sizes that I had on a table and so I had the same colors going on and wanted to do them all at the same time. This particular painting I had started out with it upside down and then it really wasn't working for me so I turned it upside down and then it started to work for me.
there's another smaller one that's that was that I did at the same time as I did this previous one. So there's this feeling of landscape, but also ascending. It could be a bridge. It could be from the land, the earth, to the heavens. A bridge could mean a lot of different things to different people. This particular one is called Northern Lights, and um, when we first bought our cabin in Wisconsin. Uh, near my, and it was really close to my birthday, we saw these beautiful northern lights and it's always been kind of an image that I've remembered about the lake. And so to me this is, uh, this is called northern lights and it suggests this vision of our lake cabin looking across the lake and then seeing these beautiful colors in the atmosphere and again you know starting at the bottom a lot of times I start at the bottom of these big paintings and move up so that was a, a, a process too to go from the bottom up um, and to ascend the three pieces of joss paper represent my two boys and myself after my husband has passed away we still love the lake, even though that was where he had his stroke. It was our happy place. So it continues to be a happy place for us. This was a smaller version that I did at the same time that I did the previous one. The Joss paper is always added at the end. And I usually find little pieces that have lots of imperfections in them. And that's kind of um, what I'm looking for when I'm choosing different little pieces to include. Now this one has kind of a completely different color combination. This is more of a, um, you know, with the greens and um, I think I call this one in the grasses. There's a sense of the darker area towards the bottom that this is across the lake again, but then the perspective changes with the grasses being close up. So I'm really playing a lot with perspective and what are we really looking at? Are we looking at across the lake? Are we looking at the grasses? Are we in the grasses looking out? Are we a, um, a bug looking out? And um, of course the Joss paper too was, uh, was, it took a while to figure out where these were gonna be placed. Here I took a whole big piece and adhered it with some gel medium, but then there's some smaller ones. And then it gets lighter at the top. And this one placed at the, at a, the spot in the gallery seemed to kind of have its own, own area by itself. And of course, everyone in Minnesota, not everyone, a lot of people in Minnesota have cabins and love the lakes and so on, so I think this speaks to a lot of people. This one I call, I think, silver fireflies because at the lake, once in a while you'll see these fireflies. Again, I have this motif of three or five or seven in a lot of my paintings. It can represent whatever you want it to represent. <laughs> now this was one that I have done over about three different times. Oftentimes I'll do a first version and let it sit and then come back to it. But this again is used with molding paste and the sand 
material, material and then the um, pieces of uh, tissue paper. This one and the next one were paintings that I had in my last show three years ago, um, and they were kind of a, an egg yellow, gray, black, which I liked at the time, and then I decided on this show I wanted to paint over it, so I chose a different color combination. There's some of the yellow still goes through and added some more tissue paper. So. Whenever I do that, then I change the name in the back and say, and add the word revisited. This is another one that was with that same color combination, real yellow, egg yellow, and I changed the color combination and painted over it. Put a lot of texture in this one. This last one now is called Ascending Into the Light. And the story behind this one is interesting. I had done the painting and I had plants uh, in my window. And as I was looking at the painting, there was a shadow that the plant leaves cast on the painting. And there was a dove shape. So I quick went up to this particular area right here and I put a piece of white paper over it, the shadow, and traced around it and took it away and put it on a, cut it out of a piece of tissue paper and as I sat there the dove ascended or the shadow ascended. So I took the same thing and then I put another piece of paper around that, traced that, took it off put it on tissue paper, put it back on, and so on. And I had it in different colors of tissue paper, and then um, I showed my painting to my colleague, who is also an artist, and she said, how about if you cut those out of Joss paper? And I said, that's brilliant. So I did that. And I, on purpose, had the Joss paper be, uh, I chose the part where there was more of the darker orange for the lower one and as the birds ascend they have less of the darker orange and more of the gold and it ascends up but this was a very um, energetic painting i remember when i was painting this that i was dancing to music as i was painting it it was very cathartic it was very spiritual it was very emotional and the birds ascended and as I said I'm not particularly one to put birds or things in my paintings but in this particular one it just seemed like I needed to listen to what I was seeing and it was um, a profound experience to do this particular painting. So I'm so grateful to St. Paul Academy and Summit School for having this gallery and allowing me to have a show here as a faculty member. And um, this was a great uh, experience for me to do these large paintings. I ended up doing seven of them. I'll just kind of show you those again, kind of from the back. There's one there. This one was at the end of one of the halls of the gallery. It's interesting that this was my last one that I did. And you can maybe kind of see that it has that um, collage feel to it. And I, what I'm thinking about threads throughout my life, even when I was in high school and college, I used color, line, and texture have been sort of my thing, and collage. Um, so this has continued, this has been a thread throughout all of my work, and um, I don't really have an idea to begin with. I might 
start with a landscape idea, but like on this one right here, I ended up just starting at the bottom and working up and it, it developed as I was painting it. Some people have said, how do you know when to stop? Well, you just stop when you feel like there isn't anything else that you could do to improve the painting. And this particular gallery was um, named for Harry Drake, who was a, an alum of this school. And it was it's such a wonderful, wonderful gallery. The students here at the school use it for their exhibits and alumni and faculty and so on. And it's a beautiful, beautiful gallery. So thank you for listening.